everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today we're talking about parallel lines that are being crossed by a transversal. Oh, they do love their fancy words, don't they? So this is one of those cases where the underlying concept is going to be, you guys are going to get it like that. And you're like, okay, I got this. And then you're going to see the pile of theorems. I'm like, what? But don't worry. There's, there's patterns here. It's all connected. You got this. So, and, and you need to get this because man, do geometry textbooks and courses and even the SAT, man, do they love parallel lines crossed by transversals. So we're starting here. What are parallel lines? Parallel lines, here's our two parallel lines. They are lines that never cross. They're in the plane, they're going on forever, and in algebra terms, they have the same slope. So they never ever cross. What does cross them? The transversal. This transversal here, the one in red, transverse means to cross. So this is the transversal. It is the line crossing the two parallel lines. Yeah, so not so bad so far, right? When this happens, when this transversal crosses the parallel lines, it creates two intersections. They are most often at angles like this where you have obtuse and acute angles. The only exception would be if this uh, transversal was straight up and down, in which case you'd have four right angles. But more often than not, it's gonna be at a slant of some kind. Now let's look at just one intersection first. And I'm guessing at this point in geometry, you've probably already heard of vertical or opposite angles. It depends on your book, what they're going to be called. And they just mean that if you have angles, if you, any two intersecting lines, if you have angles that are formed by those intersecting lines, the ones that are opposite of each other are going to be congruent. So like, and those are going to be congruent. So using that knowledge, let's look at this intersection down here and forgetting about that one for a second. So I have intersecting lines and that means that these vertical or opposite angles are congruent and these vertical or opposite angles are going to be congruent. Now, how does that relate to this intersection up here? Well, because this line has the same slope as this line, it's going to form the same angle with that transversal. And we can actually see this in motion here. I've got a little, come here, this little angle and see this matches this angle perfectly. Now look as I, I drag it up, as I drag it up, you see how it's matching that red line, but it's also this bottom part down here, that bottom line, which I'm, come on, undo. There we go. Micro the Microsoft whiteboard really doesn't like me today. This bottom line is staying parallel to these other two lines. So no matter where another parallel line crossed this transversal, it would make this same angle. See how it's making that? There you go. Same angle, same angle. Any parallel line that I were to draw, if I just kept drawing parallel lines, it didn't matter where they were, wherever they are, these parallel lines, this little angle here, it's going to be the same. See, it's fitting in there for every single one of these. It's going to be the same. And that's always true. So let's indicate that up here in this intersection. And let's also get rid of this little extra angle there. Okay. So that angle and that angle are the same. Well, these are vertical angles. So then that one's also the same. And these two angles are supplementary. They make a straight line. And these two angles are supplementary. They make a straight line. So if you use real numbers to see this, like if this was 60 degrees, and we know this one matches, it's 60. These two angles make a straight line. So this one must be 120. And look, these two angles must be a straight line. So this must also be 120. Hey, looky there. We've got matching angles. So yeah, these intersections are copies of each other. They are identical. And that knowledge is all that you need to solve all of the geometry problems that are algebraic, <laughs> if as it were. The ones that will say, if this is x and this is 5x, that would never happen <laughs> with the not drawn to scale. <laughs> we'll say this is not drawn to scale. If this was x and this is 2x, it's probably closer what is X? And you would use this knowledge and go like, okay, 
So this angle is the same as this angle. So that would be like X and these are supplementary. Ah, now I can solve it because I know that X plus the two X would be equal to 180. And you can use your algebra skills to combine those and then divide and learn that X would be equal to 60. Okay, so there's the, the algebra side of it. Now we're in the, the proof side of it, which is more unique to geometry. And we don't really do proofs in algebra, just geometry. For that, we're going to need these theorems. And these theorems describe almost all of these relationships that are present here. Now you might notice we have a lot of repeating words, like we have alternate used twice, we have same side used twice, we have interior used twice, and we have exterior used twice. So once we know what these words are and what they mean when referring to this parallel line and transversal, we don't really have to think as hard about these as to what they mean, because we have these repeating words and they're gonna mean the same each time they show up. All right, so first, alternate. Alternate is referring to the relationship of these angles to the transversal. So is same side. So this first word, alternate or same side, is talking about how these angles are connected to the transversal. If it says alternate, it's going to mean one is on one side of the transversal and the other is on the other side of the transversal. I'm hesitating to say left or right side because they like flipping things around and having, oh, we're gonna have the parallel lines go straight up and down and then the transversal goes up like this. So then it'll be top and bottom. So I'm not using left and right. We'll just say one side of the transversal and the other side of the transversal. Those would be alternate angles. Same side angles are, I bet you'll never guess, angles that are on the same side of the transversal either on that side or angles on this side. They're on the same side. Interior and exterior refer to the parallel lines. So interior angles would be those that are inside, that are fenced in by the parallel lines. Exterior, again, I know, what a stretch to imagine. They would be <laughs> the ones that are outside the parallel lines. So let's combine all these together and see which angles we're referring to. So first one, alternate interior angles. Again, alternate is talking about the transversal and it's one's going to be on that side and one's going to be on this side. Interior refers to the spot that's fenced in. So the alternate interior angles would either be this one and this one. And I'm going to number them. They're often numbered and this will make this a little easier to see what I'm talking about. Okay, so the alternate interior angles here would be three and six or four and oh, five. <laughs> Those would be the alternate interior. When we're saying alternate exterior, again, alternate is opposite sides of the transversal. Exterior is outside the parallel lines. So the alternate exterior angles would be one and eight or two and seven. And these pairs again are in the congruent category. Finally, corresponding angles. These are talking about uh, which angles, where they are in the intersection and where the other, are, <laughs> other angles are in the intersection. <laughs> That's so hard to say. So what I mean by that is if this is the top left angle, angle one, down in this other intersection, the top left angle would be angle five. Those would be corresponding angles. Or the bottom left, three, corresponds to the bottom left, seven. Top right, two, corresponds to top right, six. Bottom right, four, corresponds to bottom right, eight. Corresponding angles are congruent. Then we have our supplementary ones, the ones that add up to 180. First, the same side interior angles. Again, that first part, same side, refers to the transversal and interior would refer to the part that's fenced in. So same side interiors would be three and five or four and six. And finally, same side exterior angles and same side and exterior parts. So that would be like one and seven, or we can have this same side and exterior. So that would be two and eight. 
these theorems you're going to use mostly in proofs. So if you had a, a problem, you kind of get rid of all these little boom, 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 all these colors, all this chaos. I love my colors, but you know. So if I was trying to prove that this angle is supplementary to that angle, there's no one theorem in here that says that, but I could say there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Honestly, as long as you have these in your mind, there's a lot of different ways you could say that these two angles are supplementary because same side interior angles are supplementary. And then you could say that those two angles are congruent because vertical angles are congruent. And then because we called this a and B, so I said, because A is equal to B and A is supplementary to C, then B is supplementary to C. That's the process that you can follow through for that proof. And that's not the only way to do that. There's a lot of different ways when you have these again at your, at your disposal, you could say that this angle is corresponding angle to that one. So call this A and B now, A and B are congruent and B and C are supplementary because they're making a straight line. And then, ah, A and C, because if A is congruent to B and B is supplementary to C, then A is supplementary to A. I'm just running through that very quickly, but you see what I'm saying? There's a lot of combinations that you can use to prove once you have these in your wheelhouse. And that's where they're going to come in the most handy is for those proofs. But most often, if you're talking about the SAT, all they really want you to know for the SAT is to have this knowledge in your head that if you have these two little intersections made by parallel lines and a transversal, that those are the angles that are the matching colors there would be congruent and the opposite colors would be supplementary. And there you go. It's a lot of verbiage, but that underlying core concept, I don't think is one of the hardest in geometry, but this can definitely trip students up. So just practice it. So you remember that alternate and same side is talking about the transversal interior exterior is talking about the parallel lines and you should have this pretty much well in hand. <laughs> there you go. Hey guys, just wanted to let you know, I have got some cool stuff coming up. So keep an eye on the channel. I have some brand new math courses, SAT prep courses, a whole thing full of tips and tricks for the SAT, lots of good stuff coming. And if this video in particular was of any use to you in any way, shape or form, please let YouTube know, comment, like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.